Hello everybody, it's Chad here back with another uh, lab for Packet Tracer. Today's video is multi-area open shortest path first. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me. I am CCNA routing and switching certified. I'm currently studying for my CCMP. Uh, the purpose of these videos are to help you become more comfortable in the command line uh, or at least more familiar with the protocols that we are configuring. The instructions say we have decided to configure multi-area open shortest path first in our network. We have offices in Florida, California, and Tennessee. Configure the routes to advertise all network interfaces. Run the appropriate commands to see who becomes the designated slash backup designated router in all areas. Change the California router to become the designated router in area 0. Lastly, summarize the route at the area border router to clean up the routing table. I did throw in a curveball here and that is route summarization. Uh, that is not a CCNA topic currently on the uh, ICND2 or on the combined exam, uh, but it is something that is very useful to know uh, because it definitely, as I said here, can help clean up the routing table, and that's something that is very useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and configure um, the first areas, and then I'm going to speed through the rest of them. Uh, so if you note, I have over here, I have uh, this little bit of instructions that will help you stay on track here um, in configuring open shortest path first. Uh, these are the things that must match in between routers. Uh, the devices must be in the same area. Uh, the devices must have the same authentication. The devices must be in the same subnet. The devices hello and dead timers must match. And lastly, the devices must have matching stub flags. Now the big ones that usually you're going to miss are the same area. You may configure uh, this device in a certain area and then this device in an area. If these interfaces with OSPF being a link state protocol do not match, they're not going to form any relationship at all. Uh, another big thing is the subnet. Uh, again, if this device can't ping this device uh, because it's on a different subnet, you're going to have issues. And lastly, the hello and dead timers. Uh, if this device is sending intervals of 10 second hellos, this is sending every 20 seconds, uh, that is going to be a mismatch and it is not going to be able to form uh, an adjacency correctly. Uh, we're going to do uh, this one together and then I'm going to do the rest in super fast speed. Uh, so let's go under global configuration. So let's do router. OSPF. Now let's do the question mark. It's asking for a process ID. This is locally significant to this router. Uh, this doesn't have to match on every router. Um, however, it is easier if they do match. This is not your area. This is just simply the process at which open shortest path first is going to run on this particular router. So convenience, we're going to go with one. So it's a question mark. We have a lot of different options here for packet tracer. You may have more. However, um, the ones we are going to be playing with today is area. We're going to be working with the network command and we're going to use router ID maybe. Um, the reason I say that, router ID is how the device will recognize itself across the other devices. Uh, so open shortest path first being a link state routing protocol, when it's forming adjacencies it's going to form based on what the router ID is. And what I mean by that is the router ID is significant because when we're trying to decide who was going to be the designated and backup designated router, obviously uh, the highest active IP address is what takes over for those routes unless we have a priority set up. Um, so in particular per router how it decides is, is it chooses the highest active uh, loopback interface. If it doesn't have one of those it's going to choose the highest active uh, physical interface and then lastly it uses the router ID. So if we were to hard code this router ID but we have a loopback interface and a physical interface this router ID command is going to take primary meaning that it is going to be how the router is recognized. However if we don't code that and we have a loopback interface and we have a physical interface the loopback interface will win. Uh, just make sure you are familiar with that because it does help you identify devices. Uh, for this purpose we're just going to uh, let it uh, choose for us here and then um, we're going to configure the Tennessee with a static router ID. Uh, so here we're just going to type in network 
is asking for a network number. Uh, so we're going to do 192.168.0.0. And then we're going to hit question mark. And then it's asking for wildcard bits. Uh, we're going to do 0.0.255.255. Now the reason I did this is one, I'm just trying to be lazy and get through the video, um, but I want to make it very clear what uh, Wildcard Bits offers you um, with routing protocols. So for this example, I have router interfaces of 192.168. Uh, we'll just take a guess 2.0, and I have a router interface of 168.0. 3.0. Now it's not physically dot zero. I'm just summarizing here. Um, and so if you'll notice here, um, the only digits that are actually changing here is in these middle octets. So I could be very specific and say that this only goes up so much and I could break that down into binary. Again, I'm just being lazy here. Um, but in terms of I'm saying the first two octets are host and the last two, or excuse me, the first two is network and the last two is host, meaning ignore the first two bit uh, or first two octets and only focus on this last two because that's going to be what's changing. Uh, again, I could be very specific here and the better the specificity, uh, the better it will be um, as far as advertisements go and making sure we enable it on those specific interfaces. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and we're going to say area and then it's going to ask us what area this is going to be in. We're going to say zero. What you can actually see here is we have formed a neighbor relationship um, and that's because I had already pre-configured the other devices to make this as fast as possible. Now what I'm going to do is enable the other interface. So we're going to do network and we're going to do uh, 10.5.2.2 and we're going to enable it specifically on that interface so we're going to use all zeros and then we're going to say that belongs to area 2 we're going to exit and let's go to the area 2 uh, inner area router and let's go ahead and do the same thing over here however this time what I'm going to do is is when I enable the process I'm going to say router OSPF1 I'm going to statically assign this a router ID so I'm going to say router dash ID and I'm going to say 1.1.1 then what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the interface uh, that is facing the other router so let's do show IP interface brief and the interface that is facing our backbone area, which is very, very important. Let me mention real quick that all areas must connect back to backbone area of zero. Make sure that you connect everything to zero in your design implementation. Uh, you may come into some trouble down the roads. Now there is a workaround to that, but we're not going to get into it. Uh, that revolves uh, tunneling back into area zero. That is not a topic for the CCNA nor this video. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go router OSPF1 and we're let's go ahead and enable it for all of our loopbacks. So I'm going to do network and let's do 10.1.0.0 and then we're going to say 00.255.255 and we're going to say that belongs to area 2. And then we're going to exit out of here uh, because we can actually enable it on the interface level also. So we're going to do interface gig 0 slash 0. We're going to do IP OSPF. Then it's going to ask us for a couple different things. Here is our process ID. So what we set up earlier as a process ID of 1. Uh, and then we're going to say that belongs to area 2. Let's exit out of here. And let's do show IP route. And wasn't fast enough. Let's try again and again and again and again and again. And there we go. All of those routes are showing up now for the other areas we can see here. Uh, we've got some from uh, 10.2 over here. You see 10.2 here. So you can see we're getting routes from uh, this router over here. Uh, and then we've got some 10.3s here. So we're also getting routes from over here. And we can also ping those uh, via the exit interface of the area zero routes. Um, coming this way uh, and open shortest path first is indeed uh, going to try and find the shortest path 
Uh, so in this case, uh, we've got an equal path going this way and an equal path going this way. Uh, so based on that, it will help. Uh, it, it will decide uh, what, the sh again, the shortest path is. That is the point of the protocol. Uh, let's do some show commands to get you familiar with that. So we're going to do show IP OSPF neighbor. And we can see that we formed a, a full designated router relationship with the 3.2 interface, meaning that the designated router for area 2 is going to be this router here. Let's go ahead and configure the California router to take over as the designated router for area 0. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go um, to configure terminal. Excuse me, let's try that again. Let's go configure terminal. And let's do router OSPF1. And we're going to say priority. Oh, excuse me. Let's hit the question mark. Uh, router priority, where are you at here? Um, it's not here. I wonder how will we be able to change the priority to make this router the designated router for this particular area? It's actually not under here. Um, where that's going to be is under the interface level. So let's do show IP interface uh, brief. And we're going to be doing for 0, 01 and 0, 02. So let's do interface range gig 0 slash 0 slash. Um, or excuse me, one slash uh, zero slash one through two, and we're going to say IP OSPF priority, and uh, the highest priority is going to become the designated router. If we set it to zero, it's not going to participate in the election, and the default priority for an OSPF router is one, so we're just going to set it to ten. We're going to exit. Let's go back here and let's do clear IP OSPF. Um, and we're going to do process and then hit enter that. What I felt to do was when I did the clear IP OSPF um, process, uh, when it offers this, if you hit enter, it's not going to accept it. Just make sure you hit Y. I should have known that. Um, and that's going to clear your relationships. And then when we do show IP OSPF uh, neighbor, uh, we can see that this router has now taken over as the um, designated router for this area. Now uh, let's take a look at our topics again. Our last topic here is to offer uh, route summarization and that's pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do here um, is we're going to do show IP route and that's specifically for this router. Uh, so what we're wanting to look at is the routes that this router is advertising off to the rest of our neighbors here. Um, so where you're going to want to summarize routes at is at your area border routers. Um, so that's where I'm going to do it here. And we are advertising a bulk of routes through this way, going that way, and going this way. And it all centralizes right here. We've got 10.3, we've got 10.5. So let's summarize that. And it's pretty darn easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to configure terminal. We're going to do router OSPF1. We're going to do area and hit the question mark. And here it's asking for an area ID. Uh, so in this particular case, that's 33. And then it's going to ask us for a uh, couple different options here. Um, we're going to do range because we're going to enter a range of IP addresses to match. We're going to do if it matches 10.3.0.0 and IP mask for address, we're going to do 255.255.0.0. We can hit enter on that. And now this is going to start advertising those routes and it's going to clean it up a lot. So we're going to jump over to uh, the other area border routers and do the same thing for these. Now, I wasn't very specific with my uh, route advertisement, so make sure you get as specific as possible. You don't want to consume too many addresses to advertise uh, that you have because if you, let's say for instance, uh, we're advertising, uh, we have the 10.3 range, uh, and then somebody were to actually have a 10.3.4, we obviously don't have that route, so we're going to advertise that we do, and that's going to cause some issues. Uh, so again, we're going to do area. We're going to do, uh, this is for area 2, 
and we're going to do range of IPs again, and we're going to do 10.1.0.0 with 255, 255.0.0. And then we're going to do this for our last area here. Um, global config, router OSPF1. And we're going to do area 1. And we're going to do range 10.2.0.0, 255, 255, 0.0. And that should be it. Now let's take a look at our routing table and see how much cleaner it is. We're going to do show IP route. And look at that. We're advertising um, from this particular router um, that we have the 10.2 range. And here you'll notice it shows like that. Um, but if we were to jump on another router and see how that looks, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, let's go all the way over here to our California router and let's do show IP route. You can see that's a much cleaner routing table. And we can see um, to get to this, uh, let's find the Here's one that we summarized here. Um, to get to the 10.2 network, we can see that we need to go via 10.5. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's just try and ping. Let's try and ping the 10.2 range. So we're going to do ping 10.2.1.1 and that still makes it. And let's do a trace route 10.2.1.1 and we can see that makes it over there just fine. Now I noticed, uh, let's try pinging 10.1.1.1. Yeah, for some odd reason, that is not actually uh, showing up. Uh, so I would have to do some troubleshooting for that. Uh, but that is the basis of this uh, video. I covered all of the topics in this video as far as our lab instructions. Um, just as we like with our EIGRP, you can find the uh, packet tracer files in the description below. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed these videos, uh, please comment or send me a private message and let me know what you would like to see. I hope this video has been uh, a tremendous help to your career or your learning. And I thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.